Hi everyone, my name is Molly and I'm one of the Econ 10 TAs and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about some concepts um, that will be important for the final and I'm here to help you get those straight. So this first video is going to be about the marginal rate of substitution, otherwise known as the MRS. So this is something you guys have been seeing all quarter. Um, it's a tool that you've been using a lot. So typically, the way it works is that you set the MRS equal to some sort of price ratio. This tool is called Gossin's Second Law, but you may have not have heard that before, and it's not really important that you know what it's called. What's most important is that you know when you can and cannot use it. So, there are three different cases for when you can and can't use it. So, the first one would be when we have a strictly diminishing marginal rate of substitution. So, for example, let's say we had the production function f of lk equals l to the one-third, k to the two-thirds. In this case, it's technically called the marginal rate of technical substitution because we're talking about a production function, but that would be k over 2l. So, this is strictly diminishing because as l increases, the marginal rate of technical substitution would go down, and as k decreases, the marginal rate of technical substitution goes down. So this is the case, a strictly diminishing marginal rate of substitution, where we're guaranteed a unique interior optimum. And an interior optimum is where you would be purchasing, for example, both inputs. You would be buying positive amounts of capital and positive amounts of labor. If this were like a utility problem, if we had a strictly diminishing marginal rate of substitution, you would be consuming positive amounts of good one and good two. So when it's a strictly diminishing marginal rate of substitution, you are guaranteed that interior solution with positive amounts of both goods. In that case, you can set the MRS or MRTS equal to a price ratio, and you will definitely have the unique interior solution. The other case is when we have a weekly diminishing marginal rate of substitution. So for example, what if we had the utility function u of x1, x2 equals x1 square root plus x2. In this case, the MRS is equal to 1 half x1 to the negative 1 half. So as x1 goes up, the MRS shrinks but as x2 goes down, the MRS doesn't change. So that's why it's weakly diminishing. It does the right thing with x1, but it doesn't change at all with x2. In this case, we could set the MRS equal to the price ratio and rearrange and get the interior optimal solution with positive amounts of good one and good two. But the issue is that there's also another solution, the corner solution, where we would only consume good one and no good two. So in this case, you have to be careful when the MRS is weakly dim diminishing because if the prices and income aren't such that you can consume positive amounts of both goods, you need to check on the corner solution where you would only consume one of the goods and none of the other. The third case, the third case would be the increasing MRS. So let's take a look at um, this expected utility function CB, CG equals pi CB squared plus 1 minus pi CG squared. So in this case, the MRS is going to be pi over 1 minus pi CB over CG. So in this case, if CB goes up, the MRS gets bigger, and as CG goes down, the MRS also gets bigger. So because we have this increasing MRS, we can't set the MRS equal to the price ratio to get the optimal solution. We only have a corner case. So that corner case would be, um, uh, so the, the indifference curves would look a little bit like this. So the optimal solution would be at a corner, such as this. 
So these are the three different cases when you can and cannot use the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio, which we could call Gossen's second law. So in this case, when we have a strictly diminishing MRS, we can definitely set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio to get our optimal solution. In this case, we can sometimes set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio to get the optimal solution, but a corner case also exists. In this case, with an increasing MRS, we can never set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio because we have a corner solution. So, like I said before, there were a lot of problems that we've looked at this quarter. So we've had consumption goods, so X1, X2, for example. We've had an endowment economy, which would change our budget. We've also had the labor leisure choice, where we decided how much we would want to work and how much time we'd want to spend in recreation. We've also looked at borrowing and lending with and without inflation. We've had insurance problems where we want to decide how much is the optimal amount of insurance to purchase. And just recently, we've been working on the firm's problem. So this tool we've been working with, setting the marginal rate of substitution equal to a price ratio, can apply in all of these situations. So an important study tool you can do is go through all these different types of problems and think about when can I set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio, and when can I, can, when can I not. That's all for this video on the marginal rate of substitution. I hope this helped make sense of some of the information from class. And check out our other video on cost curves. Um, and have a great time studying.